community, again, where it uh, looks like I'm not getting through, confirmed, it's some kind of holiday. It's always some kind of holiday in India. Anyway, looks like I'm not getting through to you guys about what's going on with me. And what makes me think that is the comments are all off topic. They're all irrelevant to the subject of the video, which indicates to me that you didn't understand it. So, <clears throat> let's start again from the beginning. <laughs> Look in the video description. And besides all the usual links and stuff, for those who are serious about studying the channel, it, those are down the bottom, you know. At the top, right, the first line in the video description, it gives the categorization of the video. And all the videos in this series, the New Paradigm series, are classified as Ajatavada. Ajatavada means the point of view, uh, the view, the experience, actually, that the world is unborn. It doesn't really exist in the way that we probably think it does. Huh? But that the world, <laughs> see, we look at things completely opposite of a materialistic view. We view the world as an artifact existing in consciousness. The sum total universal consciousness, which is the mother, the goddess, Shakti, the power, uh, the creatrix, she who gives language to us talking apes. and who brought us now to this extremely difficult pass in the development of our civilization. But more about that later. The point is, when one reaches a Jatavada, then there is no more need for support from any scriptures or theories or philosophies or doctrines or organizations, or anything. Huh? There's no need for support. The Buddha says, Nibbana is without support. Uh, nibbana, or Nirvana, is that which has no support and needs no support. Why? Because it is the support of everything else. But Nibbana itself needs no support. Brahman, in other words, the Tao, God or Goddess, or however you want to look at the nature of the Absolute, whatever metaphor you want to take. If you want to take a Western scientific metaphor, backstory, origin, legend, <laughs> or whatever you want to call it, that's fine too. You see, because all those views are equally bogus. They're all simply metaphors for something that we can never know. How things came to be. Huh? How and why the world is the way it is. Life. How and why life is the way it is. And how we can best live it. How we can best approach it. See, these are not the property of any one doctrine or any one theory. 
The ways of life are the shaman's ways because the shaman can walk between this world and the other world. He can, he can fly. He can move in space and time in a subtle form. And he can know many things without appearing to look into them. So the shaman's ways are not the ways of any one particular doctrine or theory because the shaman does not insist on closure, does not insist on certainty. See, the more you insist on Western linear logic and closure, certainty of reasoning and so on, the more you have to abstract your perceptions. Try to understand. To cognize something like a scientific law or a spiritual law, principle, or whatever you want to call it, a reality, huh? you have to have a language with which to conceive it. And what we're specifically saying is that life the reality, the actual experience, is beyond language. So it's also beyond doctrine, theories, explanations, philosophies. Huh? The language is about the reality. So the reality exists independent of the language. If the language went away tomorrow, the reality would still exist. So, one who is a fully self-realized being has transcended the limitations of language and is exploring the reality and especially of the inner world. And in the inner world, there is a voice, a silent voice. You could call it the voice of the friend, as we did in our series on the friend a long time ago. Or you could call it conscience or intuition, huh? inspiration, faith. You could call it all these things, but what it really is, is God, the infinite, indwelling intelligence of everything and every being is also indwelling in you and me and is talking to us, talking with us, having a conversation with us. Now, a lot of people don't understand their own experience. And when they hear or more properly feel this voice, because it manifests in the heart as a gestalt, as a fully formed feeling. But when you hear this voice, this is the source of all ideas, inspiration, huh? the wellspring of imagination, dreams. Everything is coming from this same source. Everything of form, name and form. But that doesn't mean that it's real, exactly. <laughs> because one of the names of the goddess is Maya, that which not really exists, only appears to exist. So as Maya, she is creating unlimited names and forms in unlimited languages, in unlimited dimensions all over the cosmos. So is she not also doing the same for us? Is she not also arranging to create the body according to our karma and desire? Is she not also digesting our food and breathing for us when we're asleep and repairing the body through the immune system and making new bodies through sex? Is she not doing all these things, beating our heart, huh? operating our senses, 
so that we can have perceptions. She is doing all these things. She is all these things. All these things that we consider myself, huh? the body and the mind, and the contents, the thoughts, the ideas, the inspirations, they're all coming from her. The life energy, Kundalini, her most subtle form. It's incomprehensible. You know, don't even try. <laughs> don't even bother. You don't waste your time. You can't understand being, ultimate being and consciousness because they're beyond the mind. They're beyond language. So they're beyond the concept of I and mine. And without I and mine, we can't understand anything. <laughs> so I would say we don't understand anything actually. And all our theories and stories are simply that. They're just words. <clears throat> and they can be proven wrong at any time. And they are. Look at how many plans that we have made. Huh? And how did they come out? <laughs> uh, somebody said once, if you want to make God laugh, Tell him your plans. <laughs> we all have experience of this. It's very humbling. That's why we don't like to talk about it. There's so many things that, you know, it's hard to talk about in society. <laughs> but this is one of them. That, you know, the plans of mice and men. Huh? Or as who was it? Muhammad Ali said, your plan is finished you know, with the first punch in the nose. <laughs> Life is always punching us in the nose, giving us surprises. Huh? She loves that. And what it means is that our understanding is insufficiently powerful to grasp or grok the essence of this thing called life. So we have to be content with simply recognizing these things because there is no end. There is no final conclusion. There is no final state. Huh? We made a video earlier about reductionism, the theory that there is a final ultimate state and what it is and how to get there. <laughs> all these theories and all these different schools. And they're all basically trying to say there's this one state that is superior to all others. But wait a minute, who decides what is superior? Huh? So it's just a matter of individual taste, where you want to go and what you want to be and do in the spiritual world. You know, assuming you can attain the spiritual world. <laughs> How do you do that? By meditation. Now, here comes the plug for uh, mushrooms. <laughs> In yoga, there are eight stages. According to Patanjali, yama, niyama, asana, pranayama, pratyahara, dharana, dhyana, samadhi. So if you go to any modern yoga school, they are teaching only the first four and not really doing a very good job on any of them except asana, which they're overdoing. Uh, because the purpose of asana is, is simply to sit comfortably so that you can meditate. Is there any yoga school you can go to that teaches a course in pratyahara? Withdrawal of the consciousness from the senses? Is there any yoga school that teaches that? Huh? Mine does. <laughs> but without withdrawal of the mind from the senses, how can you have concentration? Dharana. Or meditation. Dhyana. What to speak of? Samadhi the ultimate goal. So instead of these four higher stages, the yoga schools have, have uh, 
created another stage huh, of um, Dakshina Dana. Give money to the yoga teacher. <laughs> In the past, this was never a thing, you know. Instead, one became a disciple for life. But uh, realistically, making a business out of yoga disempowers it because it cannot deliver the final stage, samadhi. And it can't deliver that because it can't deliver pratyahara, withdrawal of the mind or, or the attention, the consciousness from the senses. Can anybody establish or prove that they actually practice the fifth stage of yoga? I don't think so. Nobody has established it sufficiently to me. But if you take a sufficient dose of these wonderful sacraments that the mother is giving us in the form of the magic mushroom, you take enough of it, Pratyahara happens. <laughs> and you find yourself in the world of dreams. Now, normally, there's a barrier between our waking consciousness, Jagra, and the world of dreams, Svapna. There are two different states of consciousness, and they operate by different laws. And then the transitions between them are very interesting because they reveal Turiya, the fourth state. But anyway, what happens with the mushroom is that it reduces or eliminates completely the barrier between Jagrat and Svapna consciousness. So you go wide awake into the world of dreams, and that implies that you give up your connection with the senses, at least temporarily. So this is what happens to the degree that you go into the mushroom trance, you go into a dream world. And you can structure this because it's not only dreams, it's also your imagination, it's also your creativity, your intuition. See? So when you're in contact with her, when you're in dialogue with her through the sacrament of the mushroom, then she can communicate with your conscious mind directly, which is usually not possible unless you develop lucid dreaming as a, as a self-realization practice, which most people face it, are not going to discipline themselves. Yeah. Um, so by taking the mushroom, you get access to the whole so-called subconscious mind which is really the presence of the goddess, of the personality of the goddess within. And she may not show up visually, but she can certainly send you visual messages and also audible. She can speak. So when we hear this small, still voice, as it has been described, the voice of the goddess, the voice of the mother, the voice of compassion and love uh, advising us, then we should take full shelter of that advice because she is the original teacher. Uh, the mother is the original guru. The mother teaches you everything, like how to operate your body, how to talk, you know, so many things. So the mother acting out of compassion and uh, bringing that energy into these talks is beyond any doctrine. It's beyond any theory. You know, it's beyond any sectarian faith or category or classification, except to say that it's beyond. That's the meaning of Ajatavada. And that's the meaning of this new direction in our talks. Om Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.